It's knowing that no matter what, even if the whole day I spent writing a budget, I still probably touched someone just from something that my staff did. I was taking basically the human service class and they were talking about internships and different organizations and my um, advisor said go to the YMCA, see if they have a volunteer opportunity. So I filled out a volunteer app and got a call back because they needed lifeguards and I had been a lifeguard so I said sure why not, could count for two things because um, of our splash program and our after school program. So I started there. Then when I had graduated college, our current aquatics coordinator left, so I moved up to the aquatic coordinator position. And then a couple of years later, our group exercise coordinator quit, and we thought, why hire someone else? You know, it's a small branch, so we combined positions, and then I became the membership aquatics director. Typical day for me is um, a lot of paperwork in the morning, things like that, but I typically try to work at the front desk actually on the floor with my staff close to 20 hours a week, sometimes 30 depending on the week, but it's member services, you know, making sure that I am the communication line between our metro, um, board members, everything to my front desk staff, and typically in the afternoon, then I put my aquatics hat on and I go down to the pool and um, supervise our splash program and our after school program, um, and I'm also in charge of teaching lifeguard classes and things like that. I think my education was a good base, but my staff, that's what I continually learn from because they're the ones that are on the front line all the time and as directors we forget that sometimes and are so used to telling them this is how it's done that we don't always listen to, but this would be a better way to do it or a staff or a member brought this up. So realistically my 18 staff that are underneath me are what keep me accountable and what teach me every single day how, how we can be better. I grew up never wanting anything. I didn't ever have to want or ask. It was just provided for me. And first time I taught a splash program, I was amazed just how these kids had never even been in a swimming pool before. And I had grown up with both my grandparents having a pool, you know, swim lessons whenever we wanted them. And I didn't quite grasp it at the time because I was only 18. But, you know, years go by and every year I call my parents the first splash class and thank them for everything they've done. But at the same time, seeing these kids who have nothing come in here, they get to borrow a swimsuit, and they take pride in themselves. You know, they're the first one in their family at eight, age eight that's been in a swimming pool and learned how to do a front float, back float. Don't be a wallflower, even if it's out of your comfort zone. You don't always have to be the most outgoing person, but learn. Understand what your organization stands for, what is in the community, because I literally just wanted to do Splash, but it was my passion and I found it. Um, and they're just it opens the doors once you find that niche in the YMCA that you fall in love with. That's when you're going to meet people and network with them. But there are always eyes watching whether you realize it or not. So something as simple as um, someone coming in and not having enough for a day pass and you're like, I gotcha, it's fine. And just because you feel bad for them, you might think no one notices it, but they do. And little things like that going above and beyond your call is what gets you there.